Headlines for this week include an update in the shooting of a local lacrosse student, voting for the UWL Student Union, and a fun canoeing competition. Stay tuned. WMCM's Week in Review is next. Hello and thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review. I'm Courtney Durocter. And I'm Brett Bailey. A friend of Sarah Holgum's family is offering a $10,000 reward for any information leading to a conviction for the murder of the 20-year-old last week. Holgum, a part-time student at Western Tech, was shot in her Division Street apartment on March 26th before being taken to a local hospital where she later died. Sam Paglia, a Toronto businessman, said even though he never met Sarah, he considered him, considers himself a close friend of her father, Mike Hogum, and wants to help the Hogum family during this troubling time in whatever way he can. Paglia has also been accepting donations to put toward the reward, having already received about $750 through a website he set up. If you would like to donate, go to www.sarahogamreward.com. Any and all monetary donations are greatly appreciated. Repair the old or build the new, you decide. The future of Cartwright is now in the hands of UWL students. On Tuesday, April 10th, students will have the chance to vote on the decision whether to repair our current Cartwright Center or build a whole new facility. A forum was held Tuesday evening that included answering questions and giving students as much information as possible to help students take input on this very important decision. Cartwright was built in 1958 and has served students in numerous ways throughout the years. However, due to disrepair of plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and lack of sprinkler system, the building must be repaired or rebuilt to ensure safety for our campus community. To find out more information, our student association has created a webpage to, make, to make, help students make the best decision, and it is available on our home, uh, UWL homepage. The f please vote and help determine the future of the Cartwright Center. Here's Ben Morrison to tell about a fun and exciting battle extravaganza. Thanks, Courtney. Well, with all this fun in the sun we've been having this spring, it's bound to get a little hot out there. So, if you're looking for a cool and fun alternative, stop on by the Mitchell Hall Pool next Friday, the 13th. But don't worry, nothing spooky is going on. Instead, UWL is hosting its first ever canoe battleship event. You and two of your friends use buckets, shields, and super soakers to try and sink the other team's ship without taking the dip. The activities will begin at 6.30 p.m. in the Mitchell Hall pool. You can sign up at the rec center and the cost is $10 per person. Please come in water attire such as swim trunks and t-shirts and each member must know how to swim. If you have any more questions, you can contact Laura Shepard at 715-213-9190. Now, on a very important note, I have noticed that plenty of students have been dragging around lately. They've been groggy, tired, and just plain down. That's why I, Ben Morrison, will personally be hosting a bake sale to cheer you right on up. I have plenty oh shoot, of goodies such as homemade cookies, scotch roos, and everyone's favorite, puppy chow. So stop on by the clock tower anytime Wednesday from noon to 4 p.m. Remember, all you need is one tasty treat to get you back on your feet. Now back to you, Courtney. Thanks, Ben. The RHAC is hosting a blood drive competition between residence halls. We sent Aaron Engstrand and Ashley Kelvis to investigate. There's a competition for blood. As creepy as that may sound, it's just a blood drive hosted by the Residence Hall Association Council. We sat down with Kelly Bial to find out more. The blood is just your average blood drive. Every student who comes has the opportunity to either donate one pint of blood or to do the double donation, in which case it counts as two donations for them. Um, some people keep track so that they can get pins and stuff. How is the RHAC making a blood drive a competition? There is a competition. Everybody who comes in will sign up on the registration sheet and write which residence hall they're from. And the residence hall that has the highest attendance will get a $50 gift card and they can choose what they do with it. I think most halls are planning to raffle it off to somebody who came and donated at the blood drive. How long has the blood drive been going on and has attendance been a problem? The blood drive began on Monday. It goes from noon to 6 p.m. every day. It was Monday, 
Tuesday and it's going to be again on Thursday. I know the first day we had 70 people alone, which is really awesome, and we're expecting that every day participation will go up as more people hear about it and more people get into the competitive spirit and get excited to potentially win $50. How long does this whole process take? You come in, you register, you sit there for maybe half an hour, and then you get free cookies and juice and a free t-shirt. It doesn't really affect you that much. It's so easy for you to do, and it's so needed. And you can make a huge difference but just by donating once. So we really, really hope that you'll make the time to come in and donate. For WMCM, this has been Aaron Ingstrand and Ashley Caldas. Thanks, Aaron. New rules could be put in place for the disposal of large trash items that could affect the annual mass move-out of UWL college students at the end of the semester. The new ordinance would only allow four large items of no more than 200 pounds each to be set out on the curb each week. Besides putting obvious limits on what students can discard, the new rules could potentially affect rental property owners who fear it will leave them responsible for such large items such as mattresses and couches discarded outside properties in the area around the UWL campus. City Councilman Dick Swans said the intent was to hold the landlords more responsible for cleaning up rather than the City of La Crosse. Swans was later quoted to say, this is our best shot at trying to clean up. The Cooley Region Humane Society has many pets in need of loving homes. Here's some of the animals up for adoption in this week's edition of Perfect Pets. Come meet Sonny, a two-year-old male domestic short hair. He's very friendly and affectionate, and his purr will for sure win you over in no time. Here's Haley. She's a female one-year-old German Shepherd Husky mix. She's a beautiful, lovable dog that will brighten any home she's adopted into. Looking for a kitten? Well, then Kermit's the cat for you. He's a six-month-year-old domestic short hair. He's very playful and is looking for the perfect home with lots of fun things to do. And last but not least, here's Toby, a four-month-year-old lab. He does well with other dogs and has lots of energy and certainly a lot of love to give. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. A no nuclear physicist is coming to UWL. Coming to UWL, nuclear physicist Noemi Kohler will present a lecture entitled How I Came to Love Nuclear Physics on April 12th and 13th. Kohler was born in Vena in 1933, where she went on to earn a bachelor, master, and doctor degree. She has made many contributions to the world of physics, including authoring and co-authoring over 100 journal articles. She has also served on many national committees, such as the American Physical Society Nuclear Physics Division. Kohler will give a presentation on Thursday, April 12th at 5 p.m. in Skogan Auditorium A in Centennial Hall, and the cost is free to the public. Kohler will also be giving a seminar Friday, April 13th at 3.20 p.m. in 100 Cowley Hall. All students are encouraged to take advantage of this fun learning experience. After weeks of debate between the Student Senate and Chartwell's faculty, UWL's food service company has finally agreed to install a new bar in the basement of the Whitney Center. Because UWL is notorious for its drinking habits, the community felt it would be a step in the right direction to begin the movement to keep students away from the infamous downtown scene. Assistant Dean Chancellor of Student Business, Dr. Carey Away, feels it will be a great way for students and faculty to collaborate in a more social setting than just the typical classroom or office. If the new project ends up being as big as anticipated, the bar will be looking to add drink and appetizer specials to its menu. Away added that students are encouraged to send in submissions for the name of the new bar. Many events are taking place for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We sent Summer Steiner, Cahill Truckme, and Sarah Schwartz to check out one of them. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month around the country, and here at UWL, the Violence Prevention Office and Men United Against Sexual Assault are putting on many programs. We went to check out the Clothesline Project. The Clothesline, um, which we had up for the last two days in port call is again a national um, thing where survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault make t-shirts that commemorate, th that talks about their experience, so whatever they want to do. Um, to talk about that and then those are hung on a line displayed kind of like an art installation would be and displayed for people to see and to just kind of get some awareness about the issue. It started out in the fall of 1990 uh, in Massachusetts 
it's a national program that goes all the way across the country. The shirts are really like hit you. I work with